We also have new details tonight about that daring mission during which two U.S. Navy SEALs were lost. They are still missing tonight. That desperate search for two Navy SEALs missing at sea in the Gulf of Aden during that daring nighttime mission. As VBSS visit board search and seize. VBSS is one of the most dangerous missions that Special Operation does for several factors and several reasons, including, in this case, the SEALs were off the coast of Somalia, which was a dangerous place in the first place, in the Gulf of Aden, one of the most dangerous bodies of water in the world, also one of the roughest bodies of water in the world, bleeding off the Red Sea. This ship that was interdicted happened to be going to Yemen, likely, and was carrying... Iranian supplies, including missiles and missile components to help the Houthis further attack people in the Red Sea. Now, this was interdicted. According to reports, a cable ladder was thrown up. One of the seals was thrown into the water by the rough sea. And then one of the seals, being a good teammate, jumped in after him. Now, I want to break this down for you a little bit. You're wearing helmet, which is typically a ballistic helmet. Uh, they might have had a non-ballistic helmet, but they had uh, NVGs and all the accessories. That's about five pounds on the head. They likely had probably a jumpable plate carrier, I assume. It's been a while since I've been displaced from the military, but you would typically either jumping or interdicting on the water run a more lightweight option than a full uh, cummerbund that would go around your entire body. So something more lightweight like a JPC, a jumpable plate carrier made by Cry Precision. You'd have all your gear, combat gear and equipment, as well as your weapon tethered to you via a sling, pistol, anything that you specialize in. If you're a breacher, you might have C2, explosives, fragmentation grenades, all the things. If you're a medic, you might have uh, a first aid bag on your back, and it could get cumbersome. It could get heavy. All the while, you're blacked out, under nods, trying to climb and scale a small ladder, which is a cable ladder that's basically little um, poles in between rows of cable on the side of a ship in the middle of rough seas. Now, these guys have been missing in action right now for going on five days, and it's not looking good. I ask for prayers for the Navy SEALs and their families in this time of crisis. Now, it speaks to a broader issue that's going on in the region. Yesterday, Iran launched two ballistic missile attacks into other countries including Syria, supposedly targeting ISIS and also targeting Mossad, an intelligence organization in Israel, according to their own reporting. This took place in Erbil, Iraq, a stomping ground for both coalition forces, but also Western businesses. Certainly American forces are staged. They're staged against ISIS in the region and a U.S. consulate. I mean, I've been to Erbil. It's a beautiful place in a beautiful country. You know, Erbil separates itself from Iraq proper because they're Kurds. And this missile attack happened to be inside of a populated area of Erbil. That, and I know exactly, according to the uh, imagery that was provided on the open source news, exactly where this took place. According to Iran, there was an intelligence organization that was providing support to the Israelis. This happened to be a private citizen who had a compound and a villa, and that was what was targeted. Four civilians died, many more were injured, and that's pretty unprecedented. Um, one, because it's close to a U.S. consulate. Two, um, despite it hitting ISIS in Syria, hitting Erbil is very rare. You know, Iran's used to using proxy organizations to attack including the Houthis, including Hezbollah and Hamas. Now, the complexity in all that is that we just struck 60-plus targets in Yemen of Houthis organization and their infrastructure and their ongoing attacks against Western interests, uh, Western allies, including carrier ships, in the Red Sea. So we said we we're going to do it. We did it because they continue their attacks. And what did they do? They did a protest with hundreds of thousands of middle-aged fighting males and said death to America. And here we are. The following day, they launched a missile that was shot down by a carrier. And the following day after that, which was yesterday, they actually hit a U.S.-based carrier cargo ship um, that was providing transport of goods. Now, nobody was injured in that instance, 
But they also attacked another ship that was Panamanian, providing uh, Russian oil through the Red Sea. Guys, this is a very complex circumstance. What does it mean? Well, part of it is we are not conducting military strikes in conjunction with diplomacy, because you need both. Now, I'm in no fear of Iran, but I, I've actually asked the question, like, why are we just putting Band-Aids on hatchet wounds here when Iran is obviously supplying and providing financial support to all of the bad guys surrounding this, which has been going on for decades? Why are we not confronting Iran on this diplomatically by saying, hey, you need to stop. If you don't stop, there will be consequence. Instead, we're actually going after, this is the Band-Aid on the hatchet wounds part, we're going after uh, subsidiaries. We're going after proxy elements that are low-level losers living in the hinterlands of Yemen. I mean, one thing you should understand about the Houthis, as I was stationed in Yemen, these guys have nothing going on in their life. I mean, when you wake up in poverty, in, in literal sand with no resources, no infrastructure, nothing except for cot that grows off of trees that you chew until you're high out of your mind, then literally you find purpose in fighting. And what better purpose than to fight the infidel, the Americans and Israelis? So we think that infrastructure attacks on their empty shipping containers in the middle of the desert is going to stop them? It's not. The, the following day, within a 24-hour period of time after we struck that infrastructure, which was symbolic, according to the Department of Defense, which was likely a deputy or somebody else because it wasn't the Secretary of Defense because he was in the hospital AWOL. As soon as this was put out, they literally said, we don't care, we will retaliate with full force, looking like they just got out of, uh, out of a Comic-Con convention. I mean, seriously, like I can't even take their uniform seriously, nor their demeanor. Deaf to America, they were chanting, the protest takes place, and then what do they do? they follow through by attacking. And that's the overall arching issue. If we're militarily striking in an open-ended conflict, where does it lead to? It leads to full-scale war. It leads to what's happened already, attacks on our interest and our troops that are literally out there flapping. So I hate to see two Navy SEALs missing in action. It appears to be an accident, but they wouldn't be in that situation in the first place if they weren't doing the bidding of an overall strategy. Now, why does it seem very peculiar that the Democrats, who typically are not about war, are just doubling down on all aspects of war, leaving a mess for likely Trump? I have no clue. Maybe you know. Leave your comments and feedback below. I don't understand this. But it seems like we're, we're warmongering more than we ever had in human history, as we failed and botched a withdrawal from Afghanistan. We're committed to a Ukraine fight with an open-ended budget and an open-ended timeline with no understanding of how that unfolds. The UK just donated billions of dollars to the fight. We literally are committed to supporting Israel through an endless campaign that doesn't have an end state, that doesn't have a strategy, there is no two-state solution, and we're now affecting a region, including Yemen, even further escalating the conflict, and we again have no strategy. Where's the breakdown? Well, the breakdown's between the military and obviously the politicians who are supposed to be diplomatically coming up with strategy and solutions and foreign policy. It doesn't exist. And that's the fear I have for our nation. Where we allocate our time and resources, we neglect something else. You know what's being neglected? Our country. The Iowa caucus just took place Trump swept the field as per. We understood that he was going to do that. He's going off to New Hampshire, and then the list goes on. I am campaigning for you to, one, get involved in politics. If you've never been involved in politics, you need to get involved now because now is the time to get prepared to vote, including the caucus. I also want you to get involved in local politics. It's something that we've been talking about at AmericanContingency.com, which brings communities together, is... You need to get involved in what's going on in your backyard. If you don't know who your mayor, superintendent, hell, you should know everybody from the principal to the sheriff to the mayor and everything in between. The people who annex and develop all the infrastructure and in water, power, etc., you should know because that's how you could affect change and start controlling what's going on in your backyard. 
while that's simultaneously going on, you also need to educate yourself on the political system that seemingly is going through utter chaos. You need to understand who you need to be voting for in the Senate races, the congressional races, and obviously the presidential race. It's all important right now, more so than ever, guys, because you could see what happens when you have failed leadership, a breakdown in diplomacy and military strategy, and you're neglecting the most important thing, our nation and its citizens. Guys, I'm off to the underground to tell you how I really feel because I can't really do that on YouTube. I appreciate all the input and feedback. Um, we're launching this in the new studio. Also something, you like that? You should also understand that um, I'm doing a vlog uh, for Phil Craft Survival's application, which is all on the free side of the app. You can download that app wherever applications are found. That is all the education and content from Phil Craft Survival. In addition to that, I'm also providing that same vlog on our newsletter at philcraftsurvival.com. Make sure you sign up for all the updates in training and education. And I hope to see you this weekend with all the nerds at the Ham Radio Communications Conference in Provo, Utah at Fieldcraft HQ. Until next time, peace out, guys.